We waited seven years for this moment. King's true power has always been a mystery to everyone, including every hero in One Punch Man. But he has once again proved himself as the strongest with one of One Punch Man's most iconic scenes. But how did we get here? Well, we must first rewind back to chapter 188. It begins with Atomic Samurai's A-class hero disciples discussing a Mai mask. They're looking into his past life, but found nothing as he keeps changing his face constantly with plastic surgery, meaning he may well have been living a different life all along. The reason for their investigation comes from Ayan, who felt like a Mai mask had some hidden bloodlust, which he saw during the Monster Association arc. Ayan also states that it felt like he was looking at a monster without a human heart who was struggling to control itself. This has occurred multiple times, in chapter 103 against DOS and recently against Garo in chapter 169, where he declared Garo had become a complete monster, thus deserved to be executed. In fact, his entire outlook is black and white, where those that are monsters have to be killed no matter what. Even good monsters that help out like Manako. Which is ironic because we readers know that Amai Mask was actually super ugly before becoming a pro hero. In fact, he was so ugly that everybody detested him, resulting in him feeling shame and constantly hating his own face. This led to his transformation into a mysterious being whom we called monsters. But he's actually a good guy, so he tries to help people and stay on the side of humanity out of his own will. This is clearly a commentary on the world of One Punch Man, as Mai himself stated that he would perform acts of kindness as an ugly person and people would ignore it, and as soon as he became handsome, he rose to the top of the world. It's also a meta commentary on the double standards of not only the world, but the idol industry creating a culture of what beauty standards humans should abide to, and how most of them undergo plastic surgery to meet them. It's made everybody beauty conscious to the point of reaching depression, when on the inside, it's actually superficial objective that everyone shouldn't focus their entire life on it, but rather be Moomin Rider or Saitama who understands even the basics of concepts that he's a hero for fun and it's not a lie that most humans live. These are two examples of people comfortable in their own skin. But speaking of skin, this connects to the reason many joined with the Monster Association, Predigis. Either way, Ayan and the others plan on reporting this soon to the new Reborn Council of Swordmasters. This Reborn Council includes the son of Zanbai, Shido, and a new baddie, Amahare's daughter, Yuta. Damn! Yeah, done it again. <laughs> they all witnessed the aftermath of Saitama vs Garo. They had to stand and watch as he destroyed them all with his cosmic radiation, completely helpless as well as being challenged by other monsters that they couldn't soundly defeat. With this new hurdle, they are trying to get stronger so that the world can be safe, as realistically speaking, Black Sperm was the perfect counter to Atomic Samurai as showcased in Chapter 106, as no matter how much he sliced and diced, the monster would just keep multiplying, overpowering the hero until he was saved by Tatsumaki. Later on, he was again being defeated and the Council of Swordmasters had to come together and sacrifice the lives of two of them to survive against Fura Ugly. So this leads to him wanting to create a new attack that can destroy an entity instantly. This driving force is what has made him reach the level he's at. His mantra has always been to do it more rather than how to do it. This is seen in chapter 189 as after witnessing King's power, he opts to restart his training all over again. His final goal in the series series is to find the legendary Moonblade that when combined with his Sunblade will grant him unrivaled power. But as we move forward, Nitrin shows that he's using a prosthetic leg and hand to keep up following the injuries that he sustained versus Fura Ugly, stating that by circulating one's key, you can make any object a part of the body. Moreover, he displays his frightening swordsmanship by annihilating an entire cliff edge whilst slicing the atoms between an apple so that it doesn't even realize it's been cut, bringing us onto Atomic Samurai's new measure of strength. Before, Bang was who he aspired to be stronger than, but now that he's retired from hero work, he's had to set a new target, King. Remember, King is by far the strongest character in the entire series. He's the man who uses the moon as a punching bag and used the legendary Ultimate Purgatory Hellfire Burst Wave Motion Cannon, a technique that can be seen from outer space capable of destroying evil natural water and platinum sperm in half a second. What? What do you mean that was Garrow? Nichiren comments that Atomic Samurai has changed, and it's true. He has realized that there are people out there who can match his strength, and he wants to show respect to the formidable by challenging them. After all, this is the best way to understand one's power, right? Either way, Atomic Samurai is trying to find King, and stops by to have some sushi, but someone's stealing all that good sh 
Enraged, Atomic Samurai turns around only to see a familiar face, Kingu. He asks the S-Class hero for a minute of his time, but is immediately caught by surprise at the sound of the King engine already fired up and raring to go. Before Atomic could even ask his question, King had already understood the situation and entered battle mode. Atomic asks, are you truly strong? I've never actually seen your power with my own eyes after all. Uh... If only you knew you were actually looking at it. Once again, King has found himself in an incredibly sticky situation. We know that his King engine is just his heart beating when he's scared. I mean, to be fair, who wouldn't be with Atomic Samurai interrupting your lunch break to challenge you to a deadly battle? But King does what he does best and tries to defuse the situation, only to dig himself an even bigger hole by choking on sushi, losing his balance and pointing his chopsticks forward. To which the group for some reason take as a declaration of war? Both impressed and angered by King's confidence to challenge Atomic with chopsticks, he slashes an apple into infinite pieces, scaring the hell out of King and threatening him to step outside where Atomic Samurai urges him to attack as if he was a monster. As one would expect, King is two words away from pissing his pants, and we get the standard, he's full of openings. No, he has no openings. But it's at that moment King proves what sets him apart from every other hero as he heroically states, no, let's stop this Atomic Samurai. Did you forget that it's Tuesday? I'm confused. I'm confused right now, G. Come on, guys. You know, even Ian knows. I mean, what else is there to say? The atmosphere consists of 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen along with other elements, one of the most unknown being Enga Watson. It reacts with the polylesms contained in the ionizing radiation causing the organophos phenomenon. Huh? Oh, and don't forget that last Thursday was a full moon, so that obviously means that today at exact Exactly noon, it changed to a dual squat phase. It has begun. Yeah, okay, I got no idea what my guy's waffling about. <laughs> Listen, all right, King had some words and a dream and just rolled with it. He for real just used the random bullshit. Gojutsu and baited them into believing the Dolzanabring reaction. Atomic Samurai's subordinates are left in utter disbelief by King's straight facts. And this all comes down to the nature of his true power. Now, the author of the One Punch Man webcomic, One, stated that King will remain who he is and not gain any new powers throughout the series. Are you sh me? Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. While King won't gain any new powers, one never said that King was a normal human. In fact, King has a passive ability of sorts, that being his meta look. Therefore, all of King's luck isn't the universe just simply lining up for him again and again for no apparent reason. All of this is happening because of his powers, meaning that despite being unaware of his power and believing himself to be weak, King actually has one of the best abilities in the entire series. As long as others believe that he is the GOAT, King will always get out of tricky situations. Look no further than his stance against Homeless Emperor and Black Sperm. Black Sperm even felt that King saw people as nothing more than ants and approached them with a sense of respect. There's also the instance against the invisible monster behind Waganma. He didn't even know the monster was there, yet it was his words that mistakenly saved him. Developing superhuman skills is a strange phenomena, and in the One Punch Man universe, there's no real method to gain them naturally outside of maybe monster cells. However, it is known that the excess want, need, or even use of something may result in the creation of an ability, such as Crablante, who became what he was because he ate too much crab and thus became obsessed with them. On a similar note, Saitama trained his ass off to gain strength and in doing so broke his limiter and gained such strength. Since we know the truth behind Saitama's power being limitless, readers automatically assumed that King got undefined on his power level test conducted by Child Emperor due to his lack of power. Power. However, what if this was because King is also limitless, and just like Saitama's power, his luck is immeasurable? The first time we saw King's power in action was chapter 38, where he encountered Tongue Structure, who was glowing in confidence due to the fact that no one could stop him. That was before he inadvertently knocked King's hat off. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. The presence of Earth's strongest man was just too powerful for him, and immediately the monster fell to his knees whilst the crowd cheered King on, giving him the dub without even having to lift a finger thanks to the King's engine. King's extreme look fixes the situation to maintain his reputation on those that believe it by adapting to the scenario he is currently in to suit him best for survival just 
like Saitama. Remember what Amai Mask said, okay? Humans are constant environmental beings that have survived many eras by adapting to what's around them, just like how Saitama's power adapts to his enemies and continues to grow limitlessly. King also has similar issues to Saitama. Whilst the caped baldy is depressed because he has no opportunity to feel the thrill of a challenge, King has anxiety because he has no opportunity to live a normal life free of danger. Whenever he's in trouble, he does admit that he no longer wants to be a hero, but doesn't have the courage to tell the truth, and in moments where he does finally build it up, something would happen that prevents it from being revealed. King's want for money, fame, validation and respect led him to happily adopt the title as the strongest man on earth even though he knows he doesn't really deserve it. Just like with the My Mask, this is a commentary on society and other heroes as well. The idea that a human can take pride in something that isn't rightfully theirs nor earned, yet due to social perception will be rewarded by others regardless. Just like in the face of G4, King always runs away from his responsibilities, even if it's at the cost of lives of civilians, just like many heroes who are more focused on marketing themselves in order to make a better living. These types of heroes are quite common in the A, B and C ranks. It's why Amai Mask refuses to budge from his position at the top of A class as he likes to be judge, jury and executioner about who deserves to be a hero. But as we've learned, he's not squeaky clean either with his black and white outlook on life whilst also pursuing a selfish facade of being a handsome star. The question is, what's more important? important, money and pride, or the life of an innocent human. It's important to remember that King's character parallels Saitama. Whilst one is limitlessly strong, the other is unfathomably weak. Child Emperor's power reading machine couldn't read either of their parallels, declaring them as undefined. But again, Meta Luck kicked in, causing Child Emperor to argue that this was because Saitama was too weak and that King was too strong. The two of them are completely opposite ends of the spectrum, which is likely why they're such close friends. Saitama is the only character in the series to catch on to King not being as powerful as he was made out to be. His bullshit had no effect, allowing King to live his life normally without having to put on a facade like he'd always wanted, whereas King could offer to Saitama a challenge in video games. They both completed each other. Now although there's no absolute concrete evidence to support that he would have broken his limiter like Garou or Saitama did, as that requires conquering death on multiple occasions, it would be very in character for King to have accidentally done this. For example, what if all the instances of having monsters attack him put an intense strain in his heart to the point that he had to conquer death. Another thing is that just like how Saitama has been responsible for the increase of monster attacks due to him attracting God to their dimension, King has also admitted in chapter 38 that many demon and dragon level monsters are attracted to him. But today King was really having to push his luck. Before he could leave, he stopped by Atomic Samurai again. King was ready to confess to being weak, but is once again let off the hook as Atomic Samurai believed all his waffle and instead proposes a new challenge. He asks King to slice an apple. Atomic Samurai says that he has an unusual skill of learning how a person has lived their life by the way they slice an apple, even if they're an amateur similar to palm reading. This is how he accepts his disciples. And so King grabs the sword, sits down and prepares to cut the fruit. 30 seconds pass by, then 2 minutes, 2 minutes and 15 seconds, then finally after 2 minutes and 40 seconds, King puts the sword down. He gets up and starts to leave, whilst all the other swordsmen are left dumbfounded. That's when Atomic Samurai realises that even though King was said to be a novice, he was a master. He couldn't even see the movements made by King. In fact, even the apple didn't notice it. It had been cut, but it doesn't realise it as King had sliced it through gaps in the atoms. This is the same technique that Nitrin takes pride in and King did it all whilst calling himself a novice. Atomic Samurai is sweating buckets after realising that even the blade itself doesn't realise it was unsheathed. However, as King is leaving, he admits to himself the reason why he didn't move for nearly three minutes. He couldn't unsheath the katana. Now if you want to continue watching some more peak fiction, then check out this video on your screen right now.